Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on just the Flash movie and circumstances around it. So there hasn't really been, you know, too many public statements from Ezra Miller or just Ezra Miller's team following the updates about the whole court case that's been going on and how Ezra was going to plead to those various charges that were laid out, uh, you know, over the past, well, from events that have happened over the past year or so. And of course, Ezra has pled not guilty. Of course, those charges could result in pretty severe prison time for, you know, someone in the public eye like Ezra Miller, but it seems that even if Ezra was found guilty, that a reduced, if not minimal sentence would be applied, or if Lady Luck, for some reason, is on Ezra's side, which you could argue has been the case for, uh, you know, this whole process, no prison time and just, like, monetary fines would go down, and they wouldn't even be that high monetary fines, because I think it, it applies to one of the actual charges rather than the actual person that's being charged, and a lot of the crimes that Ezra's been charged with is stuff that people with, you know, in like the low economical you know, side of things are. So the, the fines aren't too big, especially for someone like Ezra Miller, who is making millions of dollars off movies. And that was, so this whole situation, if he got fined, it would just be a slap on the wrist compared to what could be on the harsher side of things, such as prison time. But one thing that still has a lot of people's, you know, like curiosity is probably the best word, is how Warner Brothers is handling this whole situation. They have not officially fired Ezra Miller and have brought Ezra back to actually film pickup scenes for the Flash film, which is, uh, you know, still set for a late June release next year. It doesn't seem like they're, they're going to budge. We actually got some information, which I'll go over in another video, about just what the actual movie is, which is good. It's some positive stuff for the actual movie rather than stuff, you know, outside of it. Um, but that's still going full steam ahead by the sounds of it, along with three other DC movies next year. So it's a big one. So Warner Brothers is going to try and not mess it up. But yeah, to most people, it seems that Warner Brothers are just sort of biding their time and seeing if the public perception of Ezra Miller changes over the next year or so, leading up to the release of the actual film. Now, this redemption arc, if you want to call it, seems to have already started through the public statements that were released, though they did rub a lot of people the wrong way. I don't want to say a lot as if it's the majority because it's hard to tell, but it did rub some people the wrong way. That's probably the better way to put it. As Ezra actually like never really apologized for what went down and what was committed and the people impacted. It was just sort of excuses were presented for why it happened. So, so yeah, for some, that public statement didn't really work. For others, it did work and they're like, okay, let's just move on into the actual movie. And to be honest, I am on that side of like, I just sort of want to move on and move towards the actual film rather than sort of like, it's being swamped down all the Ezra Miller drama. And this will probably be the last time I actually talk about this stuff because it's worth talking about in this situation because it's about what comes next. The only other time I talk about it, if it's not about the actual movie, is if something actually happens with Ezra, which leads to some drastic changes. But that's a wait and see. I don't even know when they're coming to the conclusion of this court case because um, I haven't really been following it up on it. I'm just really getting the updates for like the biggest stuff. I don't know the actual dates and stuff like that. Some might, if you do, let me know in the comments. But it must be said, it is weird sort of how much the outcome of what has gone on with Ezra Miller over the past couple of years has changed over the past couple of months. So we know that like this whole stuff with Ezra started just as COVID was starting. I think it was the first incident was just after lockdown happened and Ezra went to one of the, like a, a, a Scandinavian country because they weren't, there was no, no COVID there. So he could, you know, Ezra could still go around and do stuff and you know, hang around in places like that. So you could pretty much live your life normally. You just had to be in that country. So stuff started there with some, uh, you know, some drama. And then that sort of went silent because Ezra was filming movies. So nothing could really be done wrong. But then after that, that's where stuff happened in Hawaii and some stuff on the mainland in America. And then I think in Ezra's actual, actual hometown is where this big court case and the, the issues that Ezra's done, that's where it started. But as I said, Warner Brothers really hasn't done anything. So they're still waiting on the outcome of this court case. But it's important to remember there has been some changes at DC and Ezra Miller did take part in something which might put him on the rights or put Ezra, sorry, on the right side of things going forward if Ezra is apologetic and accepts that what was done was wrong and it was about improving yourself and self-healing and stuff like that and whether that's actually accepted and, you know, the people at Warner Brothers and DC now are fine to push on with Ezra in the role. There is a chance that Ezra Miller could stay the Flash, though I think everyone assumed that th there would be a recasting. But the, there could be a chance that Ezra continues. So over the past, well, over the past week from when this video is coming out, 
James Gunn has taken over DC, like, officially. He's in the role. So, I think, like, it's about two weeks since that news came out. But it's been about a week since he officially took over on November 1st. Now, of course, most people would know the James Gunn story. And how he's probably had one of the... One of the... Or just one of the best or the best redemption arcs in at least modern day Hollywood. And I don't know what would outshine it anytime soon. I can't think of anything that even comes close in regards to the lowest of the lows to the highs of the highs right now. So James Gunn was obviously, you know, big director at Marvel and directing some other stuff, you know, known for Guardians of the Galaxy was really embedded. So pretty much Kevin Feige's like successor. That's what a lot of people thought he was going to be. That's what a lot of people thought James Gunn was going to be. But of course, then he was like, quote unquote, cancelled by some old tweets fired dc jumped in picked him up for the suicide squad marvel went oh my god they've taken advantage of this they brought him back on for guardians of the galaxy 3 and it's just been up 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 and up made peacemaker one of the most successful sexual uh, successful and viral shows of the past 12 months and now he's the head of dc it's probably no one if you told if you said 12 months ago that james gunn's going to be the head of dc no one would believe you but his past 12 months has been so, or past 12 to 18 months has been so successful that it sort of makes sense that he would jump into that role. So James Gunn is familiar with second chances. He's familiar with that because he was given one. So it makes you curious whether he would hand that same, you know, thing out to Ezra Miller. Now it's very important to remember that James Gunn had good experiences working with Ezra Miller while doing those scenes for that Peacemaker cameo sort of scene for the Justice League in the Peacemaker season one finale. He's had good experiences with Ezra, had nothing but good things to say about Ezra, um, even after all the stuff with Ezra was coming out because Peacemaker had come out, I think around the time of one of the first Hawaii things, I think that finale. So he had nothing but good things to say. So Gunn might, I don't want to say Gunn would fight to keep Ezra in the role, but I don't think Gunn would be the one to, I guess, hold the smoking gun for Ezra's time as the Flash. So... I don't see Gunn being, or James Gunn being, the reason that Ezra isn't in the role anymore. He might be a reason that Ezra actually stayed, which might rub people the wrong way, considering what Ezra has done. But it's all about, you know, I guess, progression and self-healing and stuff like that, and Gunn might be open to that. Now, another player in this is David Zaslav, the new sort of head of things at Warner Brothers Discovery, and obviously DC as well, because he's above DC and oversees some of that stuff and all that stuff like that. Now, would David Zaslav really care about keeping Ezra if public reception to the portrayal of his of the character of Barry Allen in the movie is good? If that's all received good, which at the moment from what we can tell from what's coming out from uh, test screenings, people are loving the movie. They're loving Ezra as Barry and just Ezra in that movie as, as a whole in those different roles he's playing. People are loving it. And as we've said before in videos, whether it's about Ezra or other, other stuff, a lot of the stuff you see happen on Twitter and on the internet news and stuff like that, you would be lucky if 5 to maybe 10% of the audience that's actually going to see the movies even know what's going on. And in this particular case, what's even going on with Ezra Miller and stuff like that, they probably just like, okay, it's the, the dude that's playing The Flash. If you're not on social media, and specifically, I guess, TikTok and Twitter, you probably have, you, you might not even know about this at all, about what's even going on with Ezra Miller, unless someone randomly told you as you're going in to watch the flash film so it would not surprise me at all if they literally wait until the movie comes out see how it's received see what ezra is you know what point ezra is at in their personal life and whether there's any sort of healing that's happening and you know <laughs> just repair to themselves if that's going on and they feel that it's safe to move on or it's, it's fine to move on with ezra in the role it would not surprise me in the slightest if they do that if they do that at all, it would not surprise me. Because one of the D things DC does need, and David Zaslav has said this, which had people thinking about two, two weeks ago that it was sort of insinuating that Ezra might have stayed, was that it was about keeping what is there and keeping a mold, uh, or not keeping a mold, but keeping the shape of DC and its characters there at the moment with the people they have. And this could have been referring to like Ben Affleck as Batman. But a lot of people thought this might have been referring to Ezra Miller as the Flash as well, because David Zaslav hasn't publicly said anything about the Ezra Miller situation in regards to like the negative side, like, oh, he, you know, Ezra's not going to be in the role anymore. Now, of course, this is the big elephant in the room when it comes to this, regardless of what David Zaslav and James Gunn think about Ezra Miller and whether they want to keep Ezra in the role, it depends on the result of this court case. If prison time is presented, even if it's six months or even if it's 20, I think it's the maximum of 25 years or something. If prison time is presented, then yeah, Ezra is 100% out, no matter what. Because I don't think you can have someone that was found guilty and sent to prison 
and then keep them in the role. Now, there is the chance, as I said before, that Ezra could be found guilty and just get a monetary fine. And that would be maybe like the gray area that Warner Brothers and David Zaslav and James Gunn would have to think about and go, well, hold on, he was found guilty, but he wasn't sent to prison. So can we keep him in the role? We'll keep Ezra in the role. That would be the gray area, the big question there. But if Ezra goes to prison, I mean, I'm sorry, but Ezra's out 100%, surely. And there's two options. Like if Ezra is found you know, guilty and maybe does go to prison or just is found guilty as a whole and Warner Brothers doesn't move on. I think they have to probably give a breather for a few years for the Flash character or at least a Flash sequel. So another Flash movie. And maybe if they recast the Flash, have that character or that actor, whoever it is, maybe just show up in a couple of random projects here and there. But I think that's the exact same outcome even if Ezra is found not guilty. I think you still give a breather for a few years for a Flash sequel, three, four, maybe five years and just have Ezra show up as the character in some random projects from here to there, you know, throughout those four to five years until the sequel is, you know, going to come out. We got that news that the Flash sequel has already been re uh, been written, uh, written, might I say, but that could be like a loose draft copy that still needs to go over a couple of different re rewrites and stuff like that. Like, and James Gunn might not have been agreed to that thing as well. Like he's the new head of DC. That sequel was written before he took over the role. He might not like, like what it is. It might not fit into what the plan is going forward over the next five to 10 years. So he, that might get scrapped completely and they have to, you know, start from the get go with that whole thing. But yeah, this whole situation is going to be very interesting. As I said, I probably won't do another video on it unless it's like the actual outcome of what this court case is with Ezra Miller. And that might not be for ages. That might not be until just before the movie comes out. I have no idea when the outcome is going to come out. Because uh, court things are really weird. They either go for like two seconds or they go for two years. So that's a wait and find out. But hopefully we'll find out soon just so you can sort of like, I guess, move on and know that you're going to get a recast. But if they have to recast, it puts that movie in a weird situation, especially if this whole thing is, you know, revealed before the movie comes out. But then again, that might give them a chance to put like an end credit scene where the flash changes looks or something. I don't know. It's a wait and find out. It's all weird. But yeah. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this whole thing. Do you think there's a possibility that Ezra Miller stays? Do you think James Gunn and David Zaslav will be waiting to see how this court case plays out rather than like jumping the gun and recasting from the get-go? Or do you think they're, uh, do you think he's going to be recast? Do you think Ezra's going to be recast? No matter what, let me know. You know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.